You're now diving into the fish tank. Sitting down with Seth Living, Seth, OJ, Juice, Juice Man, O.N. Welcome back this to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network. Seth Levitt, DJ Preach, and of course, the man who makes it all go, OJ McDuffie. Juice, how you feeling today, man? What's up, Big Seth? And I don't know up, about fellas? the one that makes it all go, man, but you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I think you're trying to get in my good graces these days, man. We've been I'm trying. Having I some think controversy the on the podcast. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think now you're trying to get back in my good graces, man. But we'll we'll see how this goes. You know, I was told I'm, I'm excited everywhere. to have one of my former teammates in, as you know. One of your former teammates, a guy who has been discussed a lot in the tank, and partially because we had somebody who he spent a lot of time next to in Richmond Webb here in the tank. So finally, we've completed it. Keith Sims, welcome to the tank, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Looking forward to spending a little time in the tank. Yeah, it's it's about yeah, time. We got we the left side, Seth. <laughs> left Seth, side. We got the left side, man. <laughs> there it the is. Left side. I love it. I love it. Got the left side. Trust me. Uh, uh, we do. We have. We put a lot of trust in you for a lot of years, man. And we're going to get to all of that. But what I need to know is, how is a guy who's from the Baltimore, Jersey area, how do you end up in Iowa? for college ball? Now, that's, a, that's a great question and a very interesting story. Well, you know, I grew up in, born in Baltimore, grew up in New Jersey, went to high school there, played high school football there. And I was uh, not on a, what you consider a very good football team. Jeez, how many years did you play varsity football in high school? Did you start three. varsity? Three. three. I started three years varsity football. How many games did you win as a senior? Twelve. All of them, he said. <laughs> one. one. <laughs> You could have played in my <laughs> in my three years of starting varsity football. I won a total of seven football. Games. Oh wow. man! So we weren't very good. Okay, even though I was a big kid, I was six hundred, you know, six three, three hundred pounds. So I did get recruited by Rutgers, West Virginia, not Penn State, Pitt, what schools, Boston College, those kind because our football team sucked. So we didn't have the traffic coming back in to recruit me at that right. point. And a recruiter came and actually went to visit uh, Tony Saragusa because we went, we played against each other in high school, that kind of stuff. And they said, hey, you got to go check out this Sims kid. So uh, the recruiter from Iowa State came, came by to see me. I liked him. His name was Frankie DeAlonzo. He was like, come check out Iowa State. I was like, sure, I'll do a recruiting trip out to the Midwest, check it out. I wanted to study engineering. It was an outstanding school of science and technology. I went out there and I said, you know what? This is pretty cool. I can play in the Big Eight. The best two teams in the country back then, the old Big Eight, Oklahoma and Nebraska. That's and right. That's the right. opportunity to play against the best players in the country. And to be honest with you, I lacked a little bit of confidence in high school. You know, when, when you're on a football team that loses that much, even though you kind of know you're good, you don't really know how good you actually are. And I didn't get that verification until that summer after my senior year when I was playing in the New Jersey State All-Star game, the North-South game. And I got a chance to start that game. And all the guys that I read about that, that, that made state championships, I got out there and I got a chance to butt heads. And I was like, wait a second. I'm just as good, if not better, than all these guys. So that's one of the ways I ended up at Iowa State was maybe a little bit of lack of confidence and the desire to play against some of the better players in the country. We can't talk Keith Sims without talking Richmond Webb, and we'll, we'll talk plenty of Webby here, as we already have started to. And we definitely can't talk about both of you guys without discussing the epic battles against the Buffalo Bills defense. You know, um, and there are so many of them. From what I understand, there's a number of different stories to note. We're going to get into a couple of those. But one of them came your rookie season. And what we <laughs> – you know where we're going with this? It was in the playoffs, right? The division went out of the playoffs. Yeah, you the playoffs. Yeah. From what we were told is uh, you guys as a I mean, you took a – you got transportation to the stadium. But you took a limousine. Okay. And maybe a couple players from the Bills saw you guys getting out of that car and, and took issue with it. They, they did. I thought you were going to a different story. So oh. this well, one. you can bring that one up, too. We won't yeah, right. <laughs> I, I will. And I, I don't know if that was actually the playoff game or the last game that we played in the, the second game we played the season. But we took a limo because it was there at the hotel. I was one of the guys. I mean, Danny, as you know, OJ, he always got to the stadium before anybody else. 
And there was a race. We always tried to beat him, but there was no way we were going to beat Dan. Couldn't do it. And I always liked to get there early. Part of my routine was to get there early, get my ankles taped. I wanted to walk out on the field. I wanted to kind of just absorb and take it in. So there was a bunch of us who used to just hop in cabs. Well, happened we were in Buffalo, and there was a limo up front. And the driver's like, hey, I'll take you. And me being, you know, conservative with money, I was like, hey, it's cheaper for us all to chip in and take this one ride in this limo than it would be to have four or five cabs. It's like Uber Pool now. Absolutely. So we just we hopped in. We honestly didn't think anything of it. Didn't even think about fans who were going to pull up and who were going to say something. But obviously it got back to some of the Bills' defensive line. They thought we were big time in it, thinking we were better than anybody else. Look at the Dolphins taking a, a limo to the game. <laughs> And they tried to, to try to use it as motivation to beat us. But that's not the worst one. I guess what even – and this is the same year in my rookie year. We had to go back up to Buffalo, and we had to play him in the snow game up there, right? And I had done a lot of media. So I was doing an interview in Miami, okay? In Miami, I was doing an interview, and I was talking about the Bills' defense and some of the things we were going to do and blah, blah. Well, they got a copy of the tape somehow, so we're literally in the huddle before the first snap and Bruce Smith is pointing over at me and Daryl Talley's pointing over me and, and Biscuit, da -da, and they're John and we go up there, yeah, rookie, we heard you were blown off your mouth. We're going to show you what the Bills defense is about. Because I was like, we can do things against the Bills. We can definitely run the football. You know, we can pass protect. It's going to be a challenge. I wasn't disrespecting anybody. But once again, we all know that but we use every tidbit as motivation, and I gave them a bunch of bulletin board material before that. So luckily, the funny part was it was snowing, so they didn't have great traction. So I was laughing halfway through it, like, ha, 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 you're not as good as you normally are because I know where the play is going and you don't. So it was still a tough game and unfortunately lost. It was a great game, but uh, over the years, we all became friends and, and have a lot of respect. But obviously, they were great, great players and great, great teams. Danny obviously wasn't the only icon in Miami when you got there, you know. I mean, let's talk about Coach, man. Coach was, was the man, man. You know, how demanding was he as a coach? And, you know, you talk about John Sandusky giving you, you know, all those reps. But, I mean, Coach had to be part of that, that scenario, too, to make, make him do that as well, right? Yeah, I won't talk about the 12-minute run because that's <laughs> Everybody just, talks about a 12-minute run. Just to show you my relationship with, with shoes, um, you know, you get drafted and they fly you down to Miami. We had mini camp the next, you know, draft on Saturday, the next day. So they have to send you for a physical. So I'm getting sent from, we were back in St. Thomas, up to Fort Lauderdale to get my physical. They send me up there with one person. Guess who they send me with? The worst person they could have probably sent me with. And that's Mark Clayton. <laughs> so, so we all got our physical, right? I'm only we trying to think. be back at, a, you know, one o'clock for the meeting. So no we're going to the physical. Clayton's like, hey, let's go to lunch. Get something. I'm like, whoa. No, we can't do that. We got to be back. His door. I just mini can. <laughs> so what am I going to do? How am I going to argue? He's in control. We get back about 20 minutes late. Shula says nothing. Nothing. Not a word to Clayton. I get cursed up and down. What the hell? Are you? You're a damn rookie. What are you doing? You need to be here. I mean, it was unbelievable. I didn't know what to do. I was trapped, but I took it. And then he put his arm around me and said, go to work. We need you to be good. <laughs> and that's how Shula was. He, I think the, the thing I respected the most about Coach Shula, and this goes back to when I signed my contract. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Richmond and I signed a couple days apart. He actually signed, I think, three days before me. He was the first round pick. I think he got a five-year contract. They wanted to give me a four-year contract. My agent was adamant about a three-year contract. So I held out. We had a week of rookie camp, and I was holding out, holding out, holding out. I had actually come down to Miami, and we were just about ready to agree to terms. So I drove to St. Thomas. Practice was over. Walk in that old facility. I see Richmond in, in the training room. He's got ice bags all over him. I'm like, hey, you okay, dude? He's like, hey, they're killing me. Have you signed? I said, no. He said, get out of here. I don't know where I'm in Miami. I hop in my rental car and I just hit 95 going north. I drove all the way to Oakland Park because that's the first hotel I could see <laughs> from the highway. And I get a room, wait for my agent to fly in the next day, come down to Miami to sign my contract with him. And Shula curses me up and down because he heard I was in the facility. And I wasted 
practice time and I wasted his time by not being there on time because I took an extra day to relax. Wow. Signed the contract and he looked me dead in the eye and he said, okay, what kind of player do you want to be? And I said, hey, I want to be a pro bar. And he said, I'm going to hold you to that every day moving forward. Put my, his arm around me and said, let's go to work. And he rode me, OJ. He rode me for three years. <laughs> three hard years because he knew I had it in me. Rich was blessed enough to make a Pro Bowl as a rookie. Took me three seasons to become a Pro Bowl. You know, back when we played, each team got two votes. The head coach got one, and the entire team put together a ballot. So when you were voted as a Pro Bowler, it was really something special. Yeah. And I remember him, we're in the team meeting, and he's – going through the Pro Bowlers, Dan Marino, Richard Webb, and he paused. And he looked up at me and he said, hey, go call your mom because you're a Pro Bowler. You're now diving and I was into like, the wow. Fishing. We were talking to Stu. I said, you know, Stu, I want to hear a couple of things that you know about, about Keith Sampson. He's talking about, a, you know, you got a, a trip where you guys were headed to Tokyo to play in a, you know, <laughs> a preseason game. And <laughs> you, had, you, had a, you had a layover in Seattle, you had to refuel the plane. Yes. And they were, they couldn't find you. And a former, and, and a, another, I guess, Iowa State teammate, former, not, not your teammate, but a guy that went to Iowa State with you, they couldn't find your ass. Yep. And, uh, and, and so the plane was late. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let's go to the truth. Of your story. Yeah, listen, I want to hear. That's, what's the real story? That's what I'm getting at. What is the real story? Was, was, was Gene Williams. He was another office lineman from Iowa State. They drafted me. Was he a guard? Yes. Big butt. Remember Gene? Big butt? Yeah. He, um, Gene and I are great friends. We talk, you know, every week. So we, I, I got him to Iowa State. I brought him. I was, on his recruiting trip to Iowa State, I was his host. So we go way back. So they give me the itinerary on the plane of what we're doing. And it said, Seattle, we have, I think it was an hour and a half stopover, right? So it's on the itinerary. So we land in, in Seattle, and everybody is going to this one concourse to try to get some food. So Gene and I are like, hey, let's go to the next one over. We'll be able to get there and get back because we got no problem. We got plenty of time. So we go do that. We come back to the terminal. Now, we did not know because we had headphones that they made an announcement on the plane that they were not going to do the hour and a half layover. They were going to do a shorter one. Oh. So they changed it verbally. So we're still going off the itinerary. We get back, plane's gone. Do you know the sinking feeling in my stomach when I come back to the gate and there's nobody there and I look out and the plane's gone? They literally had gone, got in taxi formation. Shula didn't care. He's like, he can pay for his own damn plane ticket to Tokyo. The only reason they came back was because the air traffic controller allowed them to come back to the gate and pick us up and still get in the same spot in line. And of course, that was my first fine under the line. <laughs> I what was that, walk, that walk? Was, was there a walk of shame? Yeah, the, the gauntlet, you had to walk down that, that <laughs> oh my God, from first class on back? The walk of shame was, was even worse. Gene was typically <laughs> always kind of on the fringe of being overweight. And I'm one of the two 300 pounder guys on the team. And we went to get food. So you know we were the butt of jokes. That entire <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Please tell me, was Lewis <laughs> Oliver in there? Going to what, get food. What yeah. did Lewis yeah. Oliver have to say? It was he oh. there? Did Lewis <laughs> oh. And, oh, <laughs> said, oh, my goodness. They just, they just, they killed us. I mean, they, they literally killed us. It was, it was very embarrassing. Uh, was went horrible. to a different concourse to get food, man, and lay for the plane. Oh, uh, that's, well, that's, that's, that's Tokyo. That's, this is not a game in no. Atlanta, Juice. This no, is, no. This is no right. They got another 10 hours of flight left. You yes. know? <laughs> so, long trip was a great trip. It was a lot of fun, but who that was hard to live down for quite some time. It was worse for Gene because right. know, that was a starter. Gene right. was the seventh, eighth lineman on the team at that point. And him and Shula butted heads and never got along. And he ended up getting traded to uh, Cleveland after that. So you were kind of Mark Clayton in this scenario when he was a young <laughs> Keith Sims. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, I was following the itinerary. That, mm. yeah. you know, surely, Keith, you know, Keith, let's, let's, let's think that. about it now. You're the only two that weren't there. There was actually, there was one other person I can't oh, okay. remember who was. Right. I think it was a staff member or something like that. Oh, you know, yeah, they, they got left. They, yeah. they, they didn't matter. We were the ones that were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, if you would do this for me, would you would you break down this play? It's one of the key plays in your career. And um, so take a look at this and, 
and you know, oh my god, oh, oh, right. 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 Kid and fans, you gotta oh, like that. Now you know you want to dance, so move oh, oh, out of your seat. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Beef and rolling. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I mean that was that was one of <laughs> one of. I mean, you got some great plays, man, and that was Pro Bowl worthy as well, man. I mean, yeah. talk about that, man. I mean, you and Big Web. I mean, you know, Zubaz, that was, that, was, that was huge right there. People have to understand the timing back then. The, the Super Bowl shuffle from the Bears had come out. We thought we had the team to go and win the Super Bowl. So when they approached the team about doing this, we're like, okay, let's have a little fun with it. And that's all it was. Unfortunately, season didn't turn out the way we had hoped it would, and we didn't realize we would look as uh, crazy as we do. But I have kids. They love playing that for dad. I and, and I look back on stuff like that. I remember when um, uh, the film, uh, Ace Ventura was being filmed. And they offered Richmond and I a part. And we're like, we're not going to be in this stupid film. And Juice, yep. I, I chose the wrong film to do, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you chose that. It, it, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time with it. And it's something that we can look back and laugh at. I would love it if they could bring back those Zubas because they were so comfortable. Yeah. A little crazy looking, but comfortable. So I think the Zubas are coming back. I still yeah. kept my original pair, but I think yeah. they're trying yeah, to. I still got some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I held on to mine. I wish I kept that. Hey, Keith, Bo Kepper, Bo Kepper was on and he, you know, he still gets, he, he doesn't get recognized as a football player. He gets recognized for Ace Ventura. That's the only way. <laughs> I believe it. You know? That would have been fun to have. But again, when you're, you're a dad, you understand it's fun to, to show your kids something other than football where you want to be silly and, and you have some fun.